Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Nikon, and in this video we're going to take a look at how you can capture bracketed images so that you can create an HDR image. I'm currently connected to a D800, and let's take a look at our subject, and it's this mineral here, I'm not too sure what this is, and I currently have the live view histogram running. Now a D800 gives a true histogram while in manual mode, so this is the actual exposure. But I can see some areas that look a little blown out and some areas that are very dark as well. It's very difficult to see that on a histogram, it's actually the lowest white line here. So there's blown out pixels on either end of the histogram. We're going to capture a bracket of images for this object so that you can later create an HDR image. We're just going to use this depth of field that we have with this particular setting. We're at f8 right now on a 105 millimeter macro lens. And this mineral is about the size of a quarter. We're going to shoot the bracket using manual mode and by varying shutter speeds. So 160 is kind of in the middle, so I'll vary my shutter speeds above and below that. So let's go to workflows and down to HDR. Here we have a list of all the available shutter speeds. You just enable this. These are the shutter speeds for your camera. And you can even do a bulb HDR for night photography. So we need some that are around 1 60th of a second. So I'll get rid of the ones that we currently have here. Just double click on them. And I'll pick 1 60th, 1 30th, 1 15, 1 8th. So that's one side of it, and you can arrange these, so I'll start slowest first. Then I'll go 1125, 1250, and 1500. So you see there's really no limit on the number that you can do here. You can't duplicate a shutter speed, say you have two 1500s in a row, but you can use any of these in any amount. Now to start the capture, all we need to do is click on Capture. You can be in live view or outside of live view when you do this. I'm just going to close it so I bring up my image browser. And the images will be stored here under a subfolder of Z images. Let's click on capture. So here's the first one. Very bright since it's a low shutter speed. And it shows you the current one that it's working on. And at any time you can cancel it. You want to ensure that you capture the full range of exposure. So at 1 500, there's nothing on the right hand side of the histogram. So I got it dark enough. And if I go to the first image, there's nothing on the left hand side of the histogram. So I got it bright enough. So we've covered the full range of exposures in between using these. So I'm just going to cycle through these using the image browser. And you can use your mouse wheel or your right and left arrow key. And I'll press F for full screen. And you can use your arrow keys here as well. I'll press F again to close that. Now let's go over here and take a look. You see we also have a bit of a mini image browser here. This shows the images that were last captured during an HDR session. So. Initially, this was blank when we started, but here's the images. Now, you can only see three, but you can widen this out so you can see a bit more. And you can use the mouse wheel to move around. You can use a slider. You can use your arrow keys here as well. So it looks like we have a good capture here. We can do some things to modify the information that's shown. By default, for HDR, we don't even show a thumbnail here because the most important information on an HDR is the histogram. 
So you could see quickly here that it looks okay. But you can add more information here if you like. You just go to configure, pull some information off of here. So let's say we wanted a thumbnail and we already have exposure information. But let's get, let's say the dimensions and the file name. Put my thumbnail up at the top. And now you need to resize this, so you just move this slider here. And then move this one however you like. Now there's a check mark here under subfolders. So if I was to capture another bracket but take this off it's just going to create a bracket subfolder but it won't put this year month date hour minute second identifier on it and you could see the images that we captured here when we had the check mark on had its own counter and these will always start at zero in the folder so if we were to do an HDR capture with this off it's going to put it in its own dedicated folder. But every time we do a capture, it'll just keep on adding to this folder. And this uses the main counter. See how it started at 33? And that's defined here by MCT. And you can reset it here if you like. So it's really up to you whether you like to have a dedicated folder with a counter always starting at zero. Importing programs will view that list of images numerically and alphabetically as being in order. So this one being the first one. And that can be very important when you need to do external processing of images. So if we capture another bracket, you'll see it'll just continue the counter. Started at 40. Okay, so I'm just going to put it back to subfolders, which is the way I normally use it. Control my icon does not do the post-processing for you. You need to use an external application. Now you can also trigger the beginning of an HDR sequence with triggers. So you can hook this up to a web page or trigger it with sound or speech command, motion detection, electronic sensors, whatever you like. And that's it. That's how you capture a bracket for HDR in Controlman Icon. Happy tethering.